Good morning. My name's Ray. I'm with Team Steam. And today I'm back out in the garden because I'm going to be building a garden bed soaker system out of some old garden hose and some everyday items that most of us just have sitting around. Now, if you don't feel like paying for soaker hose or putting up with the fact that if your water has a lot of lime or other uh, heavier elements in it that tend to plug soaker hose after a while, then this is probably going to be a good video for you because not only is it going to be made out of things that you already have laying around, but it'll be the sort of design that you can't really plug up. Now, what I've got here is just an old piece of siding off of a house and a couple sawhorses. I made a workstation and I've got all the basic ingredients that you're going to need for a single hose setup. Now, I've got a couple different sizes of zip ties and that's purely incidental. It's just because I'm almost out of these and this is the same size, only longer. And as you're going to find out throughout the process, that doesn't really matter. And I've got a pair of cutters for the zip ties. I've got my garden hose and I've got my drill with my tiny little probably sixteenth of an inch drill bit on it. Now I'll explain to you why I have such a big garden hose here. This is not only a spare, but it happens to be a hundred footer, which is what I wanted because my setup isn't going to be a single hose setup. It's going to be a four hose setup. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Right here I have a four hose manifold that you can use for a four hose setup or just a splitter, a Y, for a two hose setup. So you can run two different soaker hoses at the same time or four different soaker hoses at the same time with a manifold. And so to do a four hose setup like this, I'm going to be cutting this hose in numerous places and then putting ends on the hose. And I keep spare ends around because I have such a kind of widespread watering system already that when something splits out, I, I can't afford to run to the store quick or, or uh, order something and wait for it to come in. It's, I just keep parts on hand. This is the box that I keep all my spare parts in. I've got hose splicers of two different sizes. These are three quarter, these are five eighths. In case you, loot, you split a hose, you can just splice it immediately. And then I've got male and female ends that are meant to fit five eighths and three quarters both. And so first I'm gonna show you how to do a single hose setup. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my hose running in here. I've got it run in this side of the bed. I've got it placed about where it's going to be in the bed close to it being against the ground as I can get it all the way around you probably can't see it down through here but it's all the way down through here comes out right here and then comes out the end and then there's the end the reason I've left so much out here is because again I'm running the four hose setup and so it's gonna be one here one in this bed one in this bed and one in this bed they're all gonna have an end lead about this long and they're all gonna meet up here in the middle where they will be hooked up to a four hose manifold now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this end, kink it, fold it over, and wrap a zip tie around it. So you see now here I've got it cut. I use these cutters to do it. Now I've got it kinked over, and now I've got it zip tied. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take some zip ties and strategically place them on the hose so when you tighten them down, they're holding that hose exactly flat the way it needs to be. So in other words, when you drill all your holes, I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a minute. When you drill all your holes, if you put your water pressure to it, all of a sudden the hose starts turning just a little bit. Then all of a sudden you're, the holes that are spraying just a little bit, they won't be spraying much, but some of them will spray a little bit. And the ones that are spraying won't be spraying up out of your garden bed. They'll still be pointed straight down so they're not causing you any trouble. And the way you do that is this way right here. You put your zip ties on, one next to the other, one pointed out this way, one pointed out this way, and you can see I don't have them tightened down yet. And you'll snug them down. You don't need to overly tighten them, just snug them down to where they hold on tight. And they're both pointed down this way and down that way. Not straight out, but down a little bit and down a little bit. That way they act like feet. And then you can cut them off, oh, four, five, six inches down on each side. And that will keep that hose from flopping around. See that? See how they're both pointed down? That way when you uh, cut them off and you set it down in the garden, there's really no way that hose can sit and rock or, or move really at all. And there's the finished product. They're both pointed down the way they need to. They're both cut off. And then they just are always gonna act as feet. Now you're gonna do that in a few spots. So we'll do it right here. I'm gonna do it down here closer to the corner. I'm gonna do it on the other side of the corner. And I'm gonna do one about midway down the other side. And that should hold this entire hose steady. And once you're done with that, then you take your drill and you start drilling some holes, and I'll show you what, what I mean by that. You lift up your hose, you get your drill, and you drill across the bottom of the hose. 
See how that's in the bottom part of the hose? Then you drill straight across it. And it'll come out the other side. Now what you have is holes that are at the bottom uh, part of the hose. You'll have one here and one right across from it on the other side. Both of them pointed down, but both of them pointed out, oh, about the way that these uh, feet are pointed. That way they're not just going straight down. You have one on each side going outward. And you'll do that about every eight to 10 inches all the way around the inside of this bed. Then you go ahead and turn your water on. You don't want to turn it on full blast because a, a setup like this with that, that size of hole will spray everywhere. What you want to do is turn it on and if you can run it through a manifold or if you can run it through a wire, if you can run it through a single valve that's right by where you're watering, then that's going to be your better bet. But if you can't, just turn it on a quarter of the way to start with and then see what you got and adjust it from there. And I'll show you how this is supposed to look. Okay, so here's our setup. As you can see, we're still working some air bubbles out of it, but you can see it's about every eight to 10 inches. And right there, it's just at a trickle. You can set it up at a drip. You can set it up to spray a little more than this. You don't want it to spray too much or you're just gonna cause erosion. It's just gonna dig straight little holes into your garden. But as you can see, with your feet placed the way they are, that these are all pointed basically downward. There's none of them, they're gonna be able to spray up out of this garden bed. They're all pointed basically downward. And as you can see, they're all pointed at about the same angle as the feet are. See that right there? So that's really what you're looking for. And then just a trickle like that isn't, isn't going to cause a bunch of big puddles that are gonna run over the edges of your garden bed. It's gonna soak in about as fast as it, as it uh, enters the bed. So you can set it up like that. You can set it up a little more. You can set it up a little less. And then, uh, you know, set it and forget it. Put a timer on it. You can see I've got mine running through a manifold. Just the one hose is hooked up because the one hose is all I have finished. I'm gonna do this three more times for this four bed setup and run all the hoses to this manifold and hook them all up and set them all at the correct pressure. And then I can water four beds at the same time. And now I'm gonna get my other three hoses built and placed. Okay, now I've got the four bed set up, all set up, all the holes drilled, everything set in place, and I ended up using all 100 feet of that hose. I cut out about two feet off the end is all I didn't use. So about 98 feet of hose is what I ended up using. And we'll go ahead and show you what that turned out like. Okay, I got the uh, four beds, this one, this one, this one, and this one, all being watered right now simultaneously. You can see I have a four hose manifold and I don't have them running full bore. I just have them, I, I tested each one to see exactly where I wanted them and set up the pressure accordingly. And then this manifold is just going to stay with these four beds. And then I'm going to have another manifold for these four beds and another manifold that's actually going to run these five beds. And when we get in here and we look, this is what it looks like. Just pick up a random section. See how that's just kind of spraying? That's kind of spraying, but not too much. Not enough to cause erosion, not enough to dig a bunch of holes in the bed. You pick it up anywhere and you can see, there it is spraying. That one's dripping hard, but not spraying. I've got my zip ties in uh, strategic locations to keep this hose from tipping. And as you can see, the beds are being watered fairly evenly. This, this has only been on about five minutes. So it hasn't done exactly what it's going to do, but as you can see, it's already dispersing pretty well. And like I said, this has only been on five minutes. So as you can see, it's already dispersing fairly well. Again, just, just dripping and, and uh, well, not dripping, but just lightly spraying. And we can go ahead and move these around wherever we need them. As far as if, it, if we think it needs to be closer to certain plants, we can move them around and strategically put them right where we want them. And we have all four ends capped off the same. None of them are leaking. Just kinked over with a single zip tie on them. It costs almost no money. And all four beds right now are being watered. You can see this one's getting out there pretty darn well. This one is getting out there pretty darn well all the way around. And this one, we could move over closer to this edge, but we don't have a lot of plants on this edge. We have most of our stuff towards the center. So like I said, you can move these around where you want them 
to get them closer to the plants where you need them. And again, all four ends capped off just by being kinked and have a zip tie put on them. None of them are leaking. You can see I've got this one manifold here that's got the four. And I've already watered with it. I set it on there for about 20, 25 minutes and it completely saturated this ground. You can see this is a darker colored soil. If you dig down anywhere on any of these beds, you don't even get a half an inch before you run into wet soil. So it actually worked really well. And then up here, these four beds run off of this manifold. It's another manifold of four and I already watered them. And as you can see, I had good saturation. And then now we've got one, two, three, four, five beds all running off of this manifold, which is one manifold of four. And on the end manifold, uh, the end of, on the end of the manifold is a splitter. So we actually are running five hoses off of this one. And they're currently running. And this ground is getting saturated here pretty quick. They've only been running in five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna leave them for about 25 to make sure the ground actually gets fully saturated, not just wet on the top. But all of them are working. All five beds are being watered at the same time. And now this is something where we can come out and we could even afford to water two of those manifolds at the same time if we wanted to. We've got this 100 foot hose here, but I've got a couple spares. We could bring another one out here if we wanted and we could water two of the eight of these beds at the same time or even nine if we set it up that way. But either way, we're set up now where we can water at least four beds or at least five beds at a time with just what's sitting here. Now I had four of those hundred foot long red hoses sitting around and that's what I've used for this. Those were the, like a ranch style hose. So they're affordable, but durable, but they kink really easy. So we didn't like dragging them around and watering with them. So I basically stored them away until I had a use for them. And uh, it turns out that this was the use. And I used over three of them, about three and a third of those hundred foot red hoses for this uh, particular job. And that's how you build a drip style soaker system out of items you most likely already have laying around. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button because that's going to help me grow my channel. And if you like videos like this or domestic auto body or truck auto body or art or carpentry or any of the things we do around here, you might as well go ahead and subscribe because, you know, we always got something going on. We'll see you guys around.